All right, guys, we're back. Um, we just finished case two for week six, and we are going to start week three, or case three for week six. So we're going to click on the name of the business, like always, and we're going to change it to case three, student's name, save. Click on this X here. All right, so case three starts on page 115. And the first one says create three new fixed asset accounts for each category, fixed asset detail, building, and accumulated depreciations. Building and accumulated depreciations. Where appropriate, name, building, original cost. All right, so we know exactly what we're doing. We're going to go to accounting, chart of accounts. We're going to go to new account. And it's going to be a fixed asset. The detail type is going to be buildings, apparently. Right here we go, buildings. And it's going to be buildings. Now, this is case two. It's the first buildings we've had, so I'm not going to change it. Um, I want to just remember that it's case two. Track depreciation for this asset, so I get original cost and depreciation. And I don't have to put anything in there. I'm just going to click Save and Close. Buildings account is created. Number two says create a new asset account with category type, other assets, detail type, other long-term assets, name, investments. It's going to be named Investments Case 3. So we have other assets. Or, yes. Other assets, other long term assets. The name is Investments 3. Investments Case. Three. Did I put a hyphen in there? I don't think I did. Maybe I do. Why well, it's so hard naming these things? That's when it's case three. Maybe I did. Save and close. All right, so two is done. Number three says create a new equity account with a category type equity, common stock, and name it common stock. Well, there is already a common stock for case two, and I'm going to confirm that down here under equity accounts I should see bank fixed asset there's equity accounts assignment it's my common stock oh here it is sorry common stock one common stock case two so case two already has common stock why does it tell me to create a new equity account with a category type, equity, detail type, common stock, and name common stock? I've already created it because it's specifically the only thing that's telling me to do. I'm going to create it again. Oh, scroll to the top. New equity account, common stock, common stock, hyphen, case two, dash, one. Name whatever you want to so that you know what it is. Whenever I look at common stock, like I said, I just add them all up. See if it makes sense. Save and close. All right, common stock is created. Record the purchase of a new equipment on 11220 from Staples Inc. Check number 323. So I'm recording a check. Create check. Date is 1-12-20, 1-12-20, checking account is 3, payee is Staples Inc, Staples Inc is selected, no I don't want to use the same check as last time, case 3, one twelve twenty. 20 the account, machinery and equipment original cost. Now it's funny because we created the building account, not machinery and equipment. But this is case three. So I need to make sure. Ah, and I just said that and I realized that I've created the uh I created the common stock account for two dash one. Case three does not have a common stock because it has owner's equity. So I need to go back and fix that as soon as I finish this. So I'm going to select the account, and it's going to be machinery and equipment for case two. So I'm going to look for machinery and equipment. 
There's furniture, building, machinery, and equipment, case two. Original cost. is going to be three thousand dollars three thousand one twelve checking three stables Inc save a new not really doing a new one I want to go to my chart of accounts and I want to change this equity account common stack this common stock case 2-1 edit change it to Common stock case three. Save and close. All right. So number five says record a long term investment on 11320 to e trade, a new vendor, check number 324, amount $5,700. So again, that is a new check to e trade, a new vendor. E trade is not a new vendor. I'm not creating a new vendor. I refuse to. We have one vendor there already. And I say that because the vendor does not show up on any of our financial reports that we turn in. So it's not going to matter in the least if I create a duplicate name with case two on it. It's just overkill. 113 is the date. Checking account three, not checking account one. And it's going to be 5700 for investments. Now, this investments is the wrong account. So I'm going to click on this drop-down menu. It should be investments case three. And this is going to be $5,700. And $324 is the check number. Yep. Save and new. All right, five is done. Six says record the sale of common stock on 114 to shareholders. New vendor. We already have shareholders. After receiving a check that was immediately deposited in the amount of $40,000. So to record this sale, I'm going to go to create bank deposit. I'm going to use this down here where it says add funds to deposit to take care of this. We're talking about case three checking account. This is going to be dated 114 of 20. So I'm going to change that to a 14. And receipt from shareholders. Now, here's a difference. I believe I have stockholders, not shareholders on here. Oh, no, I have shareholders. So I'm using it. I'm not creating a new one. Shareholders. Oops. For the account, common stock. Case three. Common stock case three. Amount is going to be forty thousand dollars. Forty thousand dollars as of one fourteen twenty case three. Common stock. We should be good to go. Double check him. Save a new. Number seven says record the deposit of funds from a new notes payable signed on 116 of 20 with Chase Bank, a new vendor, in the amount of $32,000. If I'm going to be recording a deposit, then I'm going to do it here. It's on 116, so I'm going to change this date to 16. Receive from, and it's a new vendor, Chase Bank. Add new, Chase Bank, customer type turns to vendor, save. It's a notes payable, a new notes payable for case three. I'm just going to put it in notes payable for three because we see, saw that that's what they did in case one. Notes payable, case three. And the amount. $32,000. $32,000, checking account three on the 16th from Chase Bank, two notes payable, $32,000. Save and new. Number eight says record the payment to Rabobank 
a new vendor. Rabbit Bank is not a new vendor, but I mean it has does not have a space in it at this time, so we're gonna create a new one. Um, to retire an existing notes payable. Whoa, wait. So it to retire an existing notes payable. So this makes me think it's the same vendor. When 117 of 23,000 with interest of $300 using check 325. See, they just can't get creative enough to create a different company altogether so that it doesn't confuse you. So I'm going to go to create button check payment to Rabo Bank. I'm going to see if this is a vendor, Rabo Bank. Rabo Bank, that's a vendor. They're the ones that created the debt. I'm just going to use that one. Checking account three. Payment date is the 17th. $23,000 for a notes payable, retiring existing notes payable. So if I'm going to do this, I'm writing a check. My notes payable is a debit. I mean, no notes payable is a credit because it's a liability. So a way to think about this is, sorry, wrong one. I need to find the account. Um, notes payable, but I need to do notes payable for case three. So because notes payable is a liability and maintains a, one second. This is Shane? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, whatever you need to do like that to make it work. I mean, you know, th that's completely fine to me. All right, thank you. Bye bye. All right, so notes payable is a liability. That means it maintains a credit balance, um, and it increases with a credit. Whenever we want to decrease it, we can decrease it with a debit. And so, if this was a journal transaction, we would be debiting notes payable. Um, and it's, this is going to turn into a, 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 a journal transaction, but we're not technically, technically doing a journal transaction. Notes payable is going to be retired for $23,000. So the amount is $23,000. And this is already one here because whenever we said save a new, it created one from the very last check that, or the very last check that was written uh, for this vendor. Um, so there's $23,000 for notes payable case three. Interest expense. I do not believe we have interest expense when every one note, we just have one interest expense and it's going to be $300, I believe. I'm going to double check. Yeah, $300. So 23,300 is total. Check 325, check number 325. Yeah, that's it. 233 for the 17th. For the 17th, Robo Bank checking three. Notes payable case three, interest expense. Good to save a new. All right. So number nine says record the purchase of a building from Lee's Inc. A new vendor. One one seventeen in exchange for notes payable for thirteen hundred. Record the purchase of a building. So to record the purchase on a building for a notes payable, I'm going to go to a journal transaction. And here's why: this journal transaction is on the seventeenth, which is the same date because I was already on. The first account is going to be the building because I'm going to increase it because I purchased it, right? So I purchased an asset, I'm increasing the asset, so I'm going to debit it. So I'm going to go find this building, original cost, and I'm going to debit it for 31800 And then I'm going to credit something, and I'm going to credit notes payable. And I'm going to use notes payable, uh, notes payable case three. And notes payable is going to increase because it, it went with a debit because it's a, a liability and it increases with a debit. So my notes payable is going up and my building's going up. Both of them are increasing. 
because this is an asset, it increases with a debit, and because this is a liability, it increases with a credit. Hope you guys remember that from accounting. My things are in balance. I can save that bad boy and not lose any sleep. Number 10 says, open print your previously customized reports. So we're ready for reports. So from here, we're going to go to reporting. We're going to look at trial balance case three. I'm going to export this thing to PDF. Save as PDF. And like I said, from here, it probably says case three, and that's the right one. Um, make this larger so you can see it. Uh, this is your trial balance as of December 30th, 2020. Feel free to pause it and review the numbers whenever you want. Page two. So your numbers should be pretty spot on. I mean, you might be off a little bit here and there, uh, a few dollars if your taxes are different than mine. Um, your naming of your accounts, you, your overall accounts should all match. Like all your checking accounts should equal what my total checking accounts equal. All your AR should equal what my AR equals. All of your supply assets should equal what mine equal. Now, individually as a supply asset, they should equal that if you did it the same way I did. But like example for this last case, we didn't create a new notes payable for every notes payable transaction we did because in case one, the book didn't, and we did in case one. So our case one is the only one that we created extra notes payable. For case two and three, we just used the existing notes payable that we had. So maybe you have five notes payable now or six notes payable now where I only have four. That's okay as long as your total for all the notes payable equals my total for all my notes payable. Um, that's what really matters um, at the end of the day. That tells me that you know what you're doing. Um, but this is it. This is the trial balance. So let's exit that. We'll go back to our report list. And we're going to go to our transaction detail by account for case three. We're going to export this bad boy. Save the PDF. I'm going to maximize the screen so we can dig deep. And here we go. Transaction detail by account. I'm going to scroll down through it. You just pause where you need to to uh, check your totals. It's page two, top. And then page three. Page three. That's it. Three pages on this one. So you can see there's a lot more transactions as you get through. Now, for those of you that are continuing on to Computerized Accounting 2, you're going to pick off right where we are now. So in week one of Computerized Accounting 2, I'm going to email you a transaction journal by account of my entire workbook, which is December 31st through uh, of 2017 through December 30th. 2020 for you to check every one of your transactions off to make sure that your transactions match mine for the most part. The only thing that should be different here and there might be, like I said, the taxes, maybe the name of the accounts that you used as far as the way you named them. Um, but the spirit of the account should should be exactly as mine, the, the, the spirit of it, meaning whether it's an asset account, a, a um, sales account, a service account, um, expense account, um, common stock, notes payable. Um, those all should be uh, spot on as far as that goes. The check numbers doesn't matter as much. Um, depending on how you did your checking account, set them up. You might have to have more check numbers than I have or less. Uh, same way with uh, you know some other things like deposit numbers and stuff, sales receipts, invoices. Um, those numbers doesn't matter as much as the, the nature of the account and the amount that you have in there. Um, well, that's it. That's the last video for um, computerized accounting uh, one, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Shoot me a text, email. Love to hear from you. And if I did anything wrong, like I said, make sure to call me out on it. All right, till next time.